Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the State of the Tamale Union. I would like to welcome all of our representatives here from the TIA, the Tamale Intelligence Agency. They always first up on the spices. They get the whole enchilada, not the half. Shout out to the patrons. Hit us up, patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. Man, you got to put a gunshot on Oh, that. you're right. We got to yep. come on, man. You're right. You sure right. I come from the hip hop world, right? Yep. I am your host, Chingo Blingo with the Big Tamarindo, the Versace Mariachi, and I got the homie producer Rob. Hey, buddy. How are you? See, we're doing like a radio station. Producer Rob. Burr, burr, burr. No, you're right. You're right. Right. Uh, you know, I came in here hot and then uh, we're starting a little bit later. So like the, the adrenaline's kind of uh, gone down, but it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. We're getting back into it. No. Yeah. You're good. Episode 32, uh, season three, uh-huh. episode 32, the public episode. Lots gone on over the weekend. Mm, tons. Tell them where you want to start, tour dates, all that jazz. Yeah, man. If you still like some live entertainment, if you still want to Get back to the old normal, not the new normal. You know, where we used to hang out like humans and, and have a good old time and have some drinks and take your vieja out on a date. Good times. <sighs> hey, man, I'm talking about you could take your woman on a date and put it down at the end of the night, brother. This is, this is, this is your situation to get back to a pre-corona romance life is what i'm trying to tell you take your woman man get a date head head on out to the freedom of speech tour we will be in san angelo texas march 13th that's like next weekend uh mission texas march 26th that's over there it's a craft brewery and they got a food park it's gonna be dope new Braunfels, texas right over there by the lake april 3rd brea california beautiful beautiful california i'm gonna get some in and out burger april 7th but if i would believe it at the improv brea colleen texas april 9th april 10th sas Awesome. Yeah, man. You know, I used to do college radio, brother. That's true. Uh, <laughs> it, that's true. Chingo will turn it on. He'll just turn it on. And I forget that like he can just go into that exact radio it's, personality. Let me just be myself. I like that. <laughs> this is, you know, th- this is Red Pill Tamales, right? This is for everybody. This uh-huh. is for the Spotify, the iTunes, the patrons. Everybody gets this episode. So I, I want everybody to know that Chingo can just turn it on and off, like be as professional as fuck, and then just be laid back, yeah. Chingo chat style. If I was to go do corporate radio like ah, that, no, you know. No, no, hombre. Well, over here, we just chilling, man. We in the lab. As you can see, I got my old hip hop shit over here. You know, we got the neon. We got the and then this, this fucking bar over here. We got Theo Juventino's big bar over there. Dude, can't wait till we use that as a big set. That's might be for the Chingo chat. We'll use that as a desk and put the drinks on the bar mm-hmm. as we're having the chat. It's a good idea. We could probably do the chat from there. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that yeah. corner? Yeah. Y- y'all get ready. Puro pinche party. A huevo. So, um, man, there's just a lot going on. And this this episode right here, I know the last one was dope. Yeah. Because we're just outdoing ourselves. For sure. The Patreon's growing. The podcast is spreading. The clips, you know, everything's circulating. Uh, we're getting the conversation more 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 robust you've been saying that from the beginning and it, it you continue to build upon that philosophy of making the conversation more robust mm-hmm. so let me put let me put this to you because i the the lefty larry shit uh, we didn't even chat about that i just i open my instagram i see mm-hmm. lefty larry on the fucking screen i'm like oh, this, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is brilliant right what are you are you leaning in more into how confident you feel in some of the absurdities going on in the world that you have to like you have to make fun of it this there's no way that mm-hmm. because the media is not gonna make fun of it because a lot yeah. of shit, late nights i can make fun of it you have to point this out yes um i would be i'm glad i'm not beholden you know what i'm saying to a, to a big network or entity or anything like that um, i mean it's cool to have to be on salary somewhere sure it's cool to you know cash a check i'm not knocking uh None of these comedians or, or actors, you know. Totally. But um, SNL and a lot of these people is very mainstream. It's very safe. They don't ever, you know, just, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. talk talk your shit. Right. If you, if you, you know what I mean? Like, it's so comical. Some of the, some of the uh, ideas and stuff coming out of the left and the, how absurd and extreme where it's like everything from, I know, I know the transgender issue is a very nuanced subject. Um, it gets even more iffy once they start talking about let a three-year-old choose. And, totally. And there's a lot of repercussions with that. But you got to be able to call out some of this nonsense. And SNL ain't going to do it. A lot of these, you know, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, whoever, they rather cover for Wall Street. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. uh, dude, the clip you sent me. Tim Dillon talking his <laughs> shit. Oh, that clip oh, was so good. Dude, I, I I laughed like a mug when I first watched it. And then later that in the evening, I said, Marisol, did you see the thing, Tim Dillon? She's like, no, I, I was busy. Da, da, da. Okay. I said, pull it up. 
we're sitting there giggling cracking <laughs> up then we went down a tim dylan rabbit hole we saw him do his megan mccain oh so uh, good. him just talking shit you know he's always doing and then like when he did the megan mccain yeah. he's smoking a cigarette he didn't even change his voice <laughs> He just has like this little nighty, this little girly, little spaghetti strap thing, yeah. hairy chest. He's just, hi, 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 daddy. <laughs> yeah, oh, dude. my God. Oh, he's recording a special at the Houston Improv. What? Of all places. You want to go? Hell yeah. All right. I got I to gotta see if there's still tickets available after uh, this. Let me, let, we'll hit the management. Yeah. I know they're going to sell it out, but let's see if they can squeeze us in. Por la cocina, way. Por, Por la, la cocina, cocina way. Yeah, three days. Um, 11th, 12th, 13th, I believe, or 12th, 13th, 14th. One of those three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wait, you said this? Uh, yeah, so two weeks? Next week? Yeah, because yeah. I, I, I have... Um, oh, shit, you're going to be out of town. Yeah. All of those days? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, next week, 11, 12, 13th. All right, let me let me double check what day we uh, fly out and all that. And he's doing a half hour special. He's convinced that an hour is too long yeah. and they're just not tuning in for the mm -hmm. full hour. Well, we, uh, we took some images... I don't want to give up the punchline, but it has my wife's stomach in it, and it's for the... Uh, oh, I remember the, this. Yep, the, yep, yep. The, the skit show a sketch comedy show that um they took one of my jokes i told this they took my stand up and they recreated it into a sketch or whatever but um but anyway not to get too off subject but uh i'm gonna drop a 30 minute stand up audio Dope. and uh i just gotta make some time go through it but um dude all right here's what we got on the list y'all we got two lists we got your list we got that list uh, and we're not gonna be able to get to all of it of course not we never you do know. there's so, so much so where do you want to begin uh well i mean cpac I, it, I think it, i think it's at the end but cpac was this weekend right yes sir uh did you watch trump's you know post first post white house speech you know presence yeah the, okay yeah what'd yeah. you think about it well I did, you know I'm, I'm not gonna lie i did not watch the entire thing okay i saw like a bunch of little clips and i don't know how long the speech was but i mean energetic you know basically to me obviously right i'm gonna be biased to sure. me to me he was saying things that made sense if you just listen to it and if you look past the fake news and the mainstream narrative of like there are nazis hitlers if you just listen to what he's saying like he's saying biden's not off to a great start <laughs> you know what i'm saying did he, he open was, with did he open with uh do you, you miss, miss me, me do you miss me right dude hey, that was so up, funny bro. you it's, know that triggered everybody he's a showman this is all a show everybody look this is a show thank you for tuning in <laughs> yeah right he's a showman uh i didn't watch the entire thing either i watched most of it because i didn't know when he was going on i didn't see any uh, links or notifications unless it's just being suppressed on my feeds but a madre. buddy of mine sent to me he's like hey he's on now and it felt like he'd already been on for a bit and then i watched like the next 15 20 minutes so it was probably like 30 minute but still like the dude just goes you put him on front of a microphone or camera 30 mm -hmm. minutes hour or two hours and he just goes did he, he had a teleprompter did he i don't know oh I i'm like if he freestyled that he just came out. Pew, pew, pew. Fact check me if I'm wrong. I think he freestyles most of that shit. Wow. And has for years. Because they do the camera that like you three. You see all the different views. Man, I didn't see a teleprompter, but I, he might. I don't know. I don't know if he memorized it, but he brought out a lot of the greatest hits. He he doubled down on the whole crisis at the border. Yeah. You know he went straight at it and he said it again. You know he said when I first came down that escalator. And I was like, oh, he about to say the Mexican. He about to call us rapists again. <laughs> I was like, shit. There goes my credibility. And he says, uh, he says, um, and I said, they're not sending their best. Think about it. Is it all? Look at India. Look at India. India is sending their best. <laughs> right. There's, it, India is worried. The country India is worried. Hey, man, it's a brain drain. All our engineers and they all over there working in the Silicon Valley. They're over there being engineers, bro. They living over there by you, dog. Sugar Land. That's why I'm trying to head out that way. Um, engineers, bro. Like, are they sending their best? I'm not saying, look, my parents came from Mexico. I'm not saying my parents aren't the best Mexico has to offer. Totally. But my dad is not a rocket scientist. <laughs> okay? My mom did a little bit of accounting or something. She took a little course somewhere in allá in Ciudad de Nahuac, allá por la, por, la, por la 20, allá en Hermoso Tamaulipas. That's about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, my mom can't go work for Google. All right? She can show you how to Facebook. She can show you how to tag my tias and shit. And how, she, she schools me. She's like, no, mijo, en las stories... Dura día y medio, no nomás 24 hours, <laughs> So I don't think that qualifies her as a Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. So again, he basically, sorry, I'm jumping around, y'all. 
That's what it's about, man. I had my CBD. Shout out to Shell Shock CBD. Yes. Promo code Chingo. Get you 10% off and you could be fly like me. What if I were to believe it? Sass. Anyways, Trump at CPAC. Bro, he got so many views. He damn near broke the internet. And the news has been dry. The news has been stale. Because Daniel Dell at, the, at CNN, he, he's not going to be over there fact checking Biden. Yeah. Uh, uh, statistical inaccuracy. Uh, Jen Psaki, they're not going to make fun of her on the mainstream. Have they made fun of Jen Psaki on SNL? Has Jimmy Fallon said like, uh, Jen Psaki, here's a compilation of Jen Psaki touching her hair. Um, um, uh, mm, uh, 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 circle back, circle back. No, I, I think that's easy target. That's low hanging fruit. <sighs> anyway, man. He was all over the Trump thing though. Fallon. I mean, they all were obviously, but the first one that populated when I, I just typed in like late night, uh, Trump speech or whatever or late yeah. night trump CPAC. pack uh-huh. it's fallon and uh and i watched i wanted to watch all of them but that one was so like unfunny i was just like all right i don't have time for this i was researching other stuff and i have it pulled up maybe we can watch it later i don't know if we'll get pulled for playing it's a late night show it should be you know creative uh, creative common whatever use yeah. but um yeah man it's just not funny it's just not funny and him saying it isn't funny either like his delivery in other Talking words about who, Kimmel? Uh, no this one was uh fallon uh and, you know, people have speculated in the Tim Dillon uh, the compilation that whatever fan made it, brilliant yeah, editing. that was amazing. Brilliant. Well, he'll talk about it, how these people don't want to say this stuff, but they're so beholden to that party and to those ideologies mm-hmm. that they're not risking their tens of millions that they're making. You know, the millies every year, they're not going to risk that. But you could just tell he didn't want to say some of that stuff, or at least it feels like it. To me, I could be wrong. He could think that it's all really funny and accurate. I don't know. Well, I mean, I, I think that a lot of folks, there, there's delusional people on each side, all right? You're going to have people on the right that that really do treat the shit like, you know, Q is a religion and they, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I heard this interesting take that, um, oh, man, I forget who it was because I want to give him credit. Oh, it was Prager. Okay. Basically, home, I think his name is Dennis Prager. He was saying humans naturally have some kind of religion. And when you don't have, I guess... Uh, uh, like a god religion then you fill it in with another type it might be veganism that might be your religion you know it might be crossfit you know right. fuck everything else it's about crossfit that can become your religion it could be the republican party it could be donald trump you know there's gonna be delusional people but on the left now that i'm kind of like snapped out of it and it's like whoa jimmy kimmel and trevor noah they're not funny this shit is like predictable and lame bro like yeah. when when andrew schultz started posting more videos where he would touch on politics and he he's more just i don't think he's not he's not a steven crowder he's not on the right he's no, just no, he's no. just calling out bullshit that's it and if he sees bullshit on the left he's gonna call it out if he sees bullshit on the right he's gonna call it out you know that's what makes him a great comedian uh when i saw him starting to fill in that middle lane where SNL and your your Trevor Noahs are not, they're just stuck to the left, stuck to the left. It's just propaganda. They not, uh, when are y'all going to make fun of Biden? Is Trevor Noah going to make fun of Biden? Yeah, absolutely not. Are they going to say, uh, it looks like the, I got to give props to Lalo Alcaraz, mm-hmm. the, the Chicano. Uh, oh, you, artist? Ahora sí, güey, bien orgullo. No, hey, güey, he's a Chicano Pulitzer, güey. Orale. All of a sudden. Give him his props, say that. Oh, part of, that man is a national treasure. <laughs> protect Lalo. Hey, güey, protect Lalo at all costs. Uh, sorry, I'm pointing at you really aggressive. You know, <laughs> like I'm the one. Go ahead, good. I came in hot. Um, anyway, he did a comic where he showed um, a little kid, little brown kid in the cage, and then another, and again on the right, mirror image. Mm-hmm. And the only difference is the name at the top. They just renamed the shit. And I was like, oh, okay, Lalo. So it looks like you will have something to draw for the next four He's years. You got to, right? You got to course correct a little bit if you want to keep, you know, the money coming in. Um, funny enough, not funny enough, but on that same subject, I was driving over here and um, I saw graffiti in the Land of Sugar, which you never see, and it was Free the Kids. Mm. Like in brown, you know, in brown uh, spray paint or whatever on these nice overpasses and stuff. And I mean, don't get me wrong, there's nice parts of the city everywhere, okay? I'm sure if we went to the woodlands or wherever else, it'd be the same thing, it'd look nice. It's just like, is that the right approach? You know, like vandalizing the city. I don't know if they lived in there, but if you live in that city and then you just go vandalizing these pretty areas of the city, Mm -hmm. that doesn't help the city Mm -hmm. i don't know i thought that was a bummer and then on the way in as you're getting into downtown houston um there was banners for uh fight for 15 you know it was like a fist with a number or one i think and it was like Mm -hmm. five for 15 it's kind of whack it's not wacky i know it's it's close to some people's hearts but it is wacky in the sense that i don't know if it's the right way to go about it 
Well, remember, not everybody's a economics major. Right. Not everybody listens to Quoth the Raven, Chris <laughs> Irons. Like, not everybody has a basic understanding of economics, and not everybody hears the argument from the other side. They just stuck on MSNBC and mainstream uh, narrative. So $15, yeah, that sounds good. It sounds great. But do you understand economics and the tr- you know what's going to happen, what all could happen, what might potentially happen? Um, do you even know what the argument for, hey, man, that's kind of not going to work? You know, I- I've heard a ton of arguments on both sides. Not everybody can say they stepped out of the news silo and... Um, you know, so, uh, you know, bl- bless their heart, man. You know, shit, we don't all have the same. What's the phrase like uh, all um, the path to hell is paved with good intentions? You know, mm. it could be that if we give everybody the benefit of the doubt, they are trying their absolute best and have the best intentions to help everybody out. But it does get to a point where some of these things don't seem like they're very well intended and they've gone about in a really like an just in a terrible way i don't know like vandalizing cities and yeah, yeah, yeah. vandalizing places and there's actually um an, another thing kind of off total off subject but kind of similar somebody sent to me uh i don't know if it was midland waco somewhere there was like white supremacist type stuff going around like flyers or letters or uh-huh. something that people were putting in i think mailboxes or posting somewhere right yeah boy speaking of generalities and what the uh the local fbi in whatever city it was midland waco did it go back to the um the, the local Democrats office? Dude. They're trying to stir the pot. You got it. It's even better. They, they traced it back to Washington State, that they believe the that people from Washington State are bringing this all the way down to Texas and spreading these flyers out for white supremacy. So basically, if you, it, more than likely, it's going to be your Antifa type motherfuckers. From Washington State, So dude, they're trying to stir the pot. Hitting up Midland and shit. I mean, first of all, man, like... That's what the news article yeah, said. Yeah, they, they... From the FBI. Man, this is what I think is going on with all this bullshit fake fear about white nationalists and it's, it's skinhead remember back in the day well you're younger than me you remember you ever see the movie american, american history yep american okay. history x american history x great movie all right this was like a skinhead dude right not a cholo like me who is that was that edward norton yeah so it's about a skinhead like nazi type dude mm-hmm. a white supremacist a person that wants to see like an all-white america and they really do not like people like you and that look like you and me yeah right that's back when maybe that was a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, in my opinion, like, you'd see, I guess you'd see little clips on the news, but you never saw, like, a skinhead dude with, like, the Doc Martens and, like, the crazy all up in your face. Uh, uh, maybe there's, like, prison gangs that are, like, on some Aryan Nation type shit. Mm-hmm. You see that on the little locked up TV shows. But the American History X skinhead Nazi dude, Fast forward to like what people think is going on. It leads me to one of the things on my list, which was um, they did a poll. And I'm not sure how they conducted the poll and the questions of the survey. But they basically had Democrats and Republicans, you know, liberals and conservatives. And they gave them a, a, a list of fears, potential fears like, you know, Trump supporters. Are you afraid of Trump supporters? Like put it all in a rank. It was things like capitalism. Are you afraid of capitalism? Is it uh, police brutality? Is it uh, white uh, white nationalists, local domestic white terrorists? Don't oh. tell me. Don't tell me Trump supporters are oh. at the top of the list. Number <laughs> one. Number. As you started one. painting this picture, I'm like, is this is this another one of those like Prager you were like uh, Trump's Hitler and they ranked him, you know, number one? And, or, oh my God, just keep going. Uh huh. So the top three fears for the Democrats, according to this survey. It was Trump supporters, number one. Number two, I believe, was um, was like um, white, like white nationalists, almost like neo-Nazi, like okay. all, all right lo- domestic terrorists, yeah. Cra- vanilla ISIS, right. let's call them that. And the third one was something else that you can kind of conflate is like Republicans, basically. And then the list just went on and on and on. And at the very bottom, thank God, was their fear of capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> thank God. Can we leave businesses alone for a little bit, small businesses? Yeah, thank God. On the Democrat side, they were mostly afraid of certain systems. It was like um, loose border security. That was like one of their big fears. I can't remember number two, three, et cetera. But that's what I mean. When you got Alyssa Milano and Chris Stella saying, uh, the thing at the Hyatt, 
uh, first of all, boycott the Hyatt because they hosting little Nazi parties and shit. They got a they got a Nazi slumber party going on over there with the little golden Trump statue and 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 the stage is shaped like a Nazi symbol that the Nazis used to wear a little bin a, a pin on their suit. And I'm like, okay, y'all sound like QAnon. Did you see that? Did you see that post by chance? Uh, Alyssa Milano. Yeah, yeah. And then Cristela talking about. Oh, she did. See? She was like, see, that's why I don't fuck with Hyatt or whatever. I don't know what the fuck she said, but <laughs> but oh, damn but. It. People like I'm like damn Alyssa Milano like you know the way sometimes people think like oh Chingo you went way off the deep end you mm-hmm. believe in all this crazy shit in my opinion none of this shit I'm saying is because I make you know what I mean I make sure credible people have already you know what I'm saying like peeped the game yeah that um that clip that you uh, you posted yesterday on I think on your page or on your stories about the the series, you know the bombing when this guy gets us into another war uh-huh. it's like we predicted it. you predicted it literally like we just talked about that about a week or two ago. Yeah, we just we were saying like it's just a matter of time. Yeah, be- before he screws up, I didn't put that in the caption. I forgot to say like this was recorded a week ago. Yeah, I was just waiting for people to be like, "That'll never happen," or for other people to be like, "Yeah, it's you mean like right now?" Right, right. Now, uh, what was the caption? Dropping, dropping yeah. bombs and not stimmies. Yeah, people hate that you bring up that fact that like he hasn't sent stimulus checks out. Which why would you hate that fact? That you're just bringing that up. I mean, considering we saw um, Jimmy Dore post a compilation of uh, all those people, and if you send me and Reverend Warnock, oh yeah, two thousand out the door, two K. What's his name? Ossoff, the other yeah, one. Yeah, we gonna cut the check. <laughs> that fucking guy. I don't. Even, I mean, I don't know much about him. Obviously, just what we read uh, as leading up to the uh, elections. But he's like a. I think he was like a documentarian. Like he made like short films or like documentary films. He's like a young guy. Mm. It just makes you think. Like, what is his understanding of like civil, you know, duties? He's a congressman or a senator now. I should say. I don't know. Wow. It's for a lot of these people, like the chick that's across the hall from uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Which, okay, Marjorie Taylor Greene's been in the news several times mm-hmm. for like her crazy, like past conspiracy type of postings and thoughts or whatever. From like the the lasers that created the fires yeah, in uh, California, Jewish space lasers, right? To all kinds of other stuff. Okay, pretty nuts, right? But then she's in this battle where the uh, whoever, whatever congresswoman across the hall from her put the, I guess, the trans flag, mm-hmm. transgender flag. And I think she took out like a U.S. flag to put the trans flag in the little thing, right? So then Marjorie Taylor Greene puts up the "There's only two gender" sign outside of her door. <laughs> that's what we're. That's what we have people arguing for in Congress. A little spending time on fake impeachments and shit. Little junior high type of uh, wars with signs and such. But I mean, if you really think the stage looks like a Nazi symbol, I mean, goddamn, man, you you tr- you really. You really thinking half the country is your problem? That's worse than the. I mean, that's on that QAnon crazy conspiracy level. Like peop, the comment section was actually kind of funny. Like the first few were like, "Oh my God, I can't believe this! I'm never staying at a Hyatt again." To which my thought was like, "Bitch, you weren't staying at a Hyatt to begin with." Secondly, the people that are going there, are like, "Okay, you're definitely you're as bad as the people you condemn or whatever." It, it's the comments were pretty funny. So the No Mamas Award today Ooh. goes to. Listen, Milano. I like it. Come and get your award. No mames. Yes. I'm going to record that as a drop. And we're yeah, gonna we need using a, that. We could produce. Pew, pew, pew. Yep. Okay. Put a drum roll. Yep. Yeah. It's in here somewhere. Put a little drum roll. No, not that one. Not that one. I know the drum roll. I know my drum roll. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, boycott Hyatt. Man, you lame as fuck. Um, speaking <laughs> of, which I don't think it's on the list, but I think uh, there's a new attempt at boycotting Goya again. Did you uh, see that? Yeah. I think they, they came out and said something else uh, in support of Trump at CPAC or a speech, I think. I know yeah. I, yeah. I, I didn't watch the clip, but he basically, from what I saw on the little clickbait title, it says something like, uh, Goya CEO says um, he is the legitimate. He's, That's right. That's yeah. what it was. He's a legitimate president. Yeah. Oof. Better watch out. Mm-hmm. They're going to add more fences around I was in D.C. <laughs> Y'all keep talking that shit. Y'all keep talking that shit on Joe Biden's internet. Joe Biden's internet. Y'all be on Joe Biden's internet talking all that shit. Mm. This kind of goes down uh, more of a conspiratorial route. And I know this isn't a Patreon episode, and uh-huh. hopefully it doesn't get taken down the way uh, Tripoli and uh, Callan did. They had an episode taken off of Patreon because it's hosted on Vimeo, and Vimeo did not like what they were saying in one of the episodes, so they took it down are we hosting on vimeo we're not we're on youtube though so they're actually they're taking stuff off of behind a paywall at this point people are voluntarily paying for this content and they still took their content down so we don't have anything we don't have anything on vimeo right now okay okay, got it but it's hosted on 
YouTube and we're pasting yeah. the link from YouTube into yeah, our yeah. Patreon. But either way, I wanted to bring it up just because it was uh, it was kind of funny. And that was the um, I already lost my train of thought. What were we talking about before that? Triple A and yeah. conspiracy. Yeah. And um, it's gonna come back to me because yeah, I lost it. You were basically saying that um, there, you want to talk about something that's a little bit more conspiratorial. And we want to be careful. <laughs> I lost it, it. It wasn't the Steve Crowder thing? It wasn't, because that one's, uh, I mean, that one's, that's interesting because he has everything so certified and verified that they couldn't take him down. So that's why YouTube left it up. Nobody fucked wow. with it. Because he's got boots on the ground, interns, employees at these addresses verifying that all that shit is false. Like, So no. they, they put up public records of like voter registration stuff? All that stuff, yeah. Went to those addresses and they're all empty lots, empty buildings. And to make matters, did you watch that clip that I sent you? Or did I, uh, I said like the first 10 minutes of uh, yesterday's episode was where he found something even more mysterious. In yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Where they went in the day after that Crowder episode aired and rem- and uh, changed the information. They changed the addresses of the r- voter registration in the system. And it was still inaccurate, right? And it was still went, inaccurate. Th- that's the part I don't want why would you change it to something else that's still not accurate and one it has to be because this chick hasn't has been missing for like two or three years or whatever she used to work for hillary she correct was, uh, something uh had, campaign staffer of some sort yeah i wonder how big of a role it was but they think she lives in another country now supposedly and like the the night where stephen crowder posted this video where his staff was was going looking at the um the public info mm-hmm. voter registration these were like registered democrats uh, or, that's the thing. It, it tells you, uh, I believe it tells you who they voted for. Or it doesn't tell you the, like part affiliation, but it tells you who you registered, like or that you're a registered voter, if that makes sense. Oh. So you're registered to vote, but it doesn't tell you which party you vote. So it could go either way. And that was a point mm. he ended up getting to was that if people come back and say, well, you're just pointing this all on the left. It's like, no, no. If that happened to anybody on the right, that still should be, they should be prosecuted. That shouldn't be allowed. How are you going to falsify addresses and, and then change it after the fact? It's just all kind of eerie and, and kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. But hey, it's the most yeah. uh, safe election I'm, I'm watching, yeah. in modern day history. Don't you don't you be saying that on Joe it's, Biden's it's, internet. You're right. Let me take it back. It's all, it's the safest election <laughs> in history. The cleanest, you know, obviously four years ago you had Russia meddling. Dude. But right now, this is the cleanest and clearest. Never been clearer. Never, Never been, been more clear. Uh oh, now there's a thing I want to talk about here. Let me not jump around. Where are we at, Rob? Uh, we talked about Steven Crowder, right? Yeah. Okay. And then um, the Aunt Jemima and all this stuff. Did you see that thing I just put? Dude, eerie, coincidental, great minds thing alike kind of thing. I was just watching a video similar to that, and um, they were referencing, I wonder if it's the same guy's TikTok, because I didn't watch the TikTok, mm-hmm. but he made really good points. And these videos of people, they're starting to really catch a lot of attention. They're kind of going viral on, on the, uh, the gram and on YouTube, along with TikTok, where he first posted it made really, really good points about how they're canceling all of the, like, Aunt Jemima, Uncle Ben's, you know, the, uh, the chef, uh, the cream and wheat chef, <laughs> but they've left the big KFC, Little Debbie, all the white-faced, mm-hmm. um, what do you call them? Logos, mascots, yeah. whatever they are, yeah. alone. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think about that? Well, I thought it was an interesting take, um, what the man said on the TikTok I posted. He was basically saying, folks on the left that like to go in and cancel stuff and all that, hold them hold them up to their rules you know what i'm saying like yeah. in other words like oh okay so so your your rules are you can't have the little native american girl on the lando lakes butter okay that's your rule now it, we find it funny it's like you turn it around on them. well why haven't you removed the white people like the quaker oats mm-hmm. quaker man and all that because now what it looks like is there are no people of color represented on product packaging a, a little brown boy can't go in there and you know i'm not saying like somebody would felt proud because they saw like aunt jemima or the lando lakes girl well you got to believe some of them do because i mean at least the families because they've come out and said like hey we think it's cool it's great we also get paid royalties having oh. her face on the packaging so what are you doing oh yeah no y'all fucking up the game now yeah not only are you doing away with the image and then the representation but now you're fucking with my money now there's no more royalties. <laughs> hey, Rob got gangster. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're fucking with the bags. Yeah, you fucking with my money. You fucking with my, that's not cool. And then when you saw that graffiti over there by Sugarland, you're like, <laughs> hey, man, you fucking up my neighborhood. You fucking up my neighborhood, man. Shit, we, we over here. Making values go down over here. <laughs> yeah, fucking up my, my property value, homie. But then hey, again, homie. They're going to be like, Rob sounding way too white talking about his property value. I'm like, fucking with my sorry. money. No, you sounded hood as shit. <laughs> like, you was borderline mafioso. <laughs> 
playing with my money. <laughs> it's the, I, 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 found, I found it was an interesting take because the way they turned it around on, on folks, they basically said, now it's nothing but white people on the product packaging. Mm-hmm. Why wasn't that racist? So now it's kind of like reverse racism back racist. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like 360 racism. Dude, and then you have these colleges, <laughs> like the, the whole segregation of everything is coming. It's like we're going back in time. Yeah. Literally, we're going yeah. back in time. And you have campuses in California that are uh, segregating dorms and segregating portions of their colleges. It's like, are we living in 19, you dorms, know? Dorms, 50s, 60s? Oh, man. They trying to overcorrect, I guess. So exactly. now you got like all black dorms. Right. I mean, I think people self-segregate for the most part anyway, but when you do it like that, it it has to feel a little bit constricting where it's like, wait, are you saying I'm not capable of having diverse friends? I can't have Asian friends and Jewish friends and, yeah. you know, the kid from Romania that's here on motherfucking student, what's that shit? <laughs> student exchange? Oh, uh, yeah, foreign exchange. Yeah, you can't be cool with it. Like, golly. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. Don't, Imagine don't, going don't, to, get, don't get me started. Right <laughs> no, please, please. I'm going to wind you up like a fucking, uh, like a Toy Story toy. But, I mean, a non-gender Toy Story toy. Yeah, non-gender. Potato yeah. head. Yeah, just potato if head. If Potato Head had a string, I would pull it, but I wouldn't say you're Mr. Potato Head. That, man, I know we talked about that one last week. Did we? I, I think we, I don't know if we did, but somebody made an interesting point. I think it was Hotep Jesus. He basically said, I'll bet you anything that they just wanted to make the packaging he's like they were saving money by re changing the boxes to just say potato head and then you still either had the boy or the dad or the mom or whatever or the kid whatever they have now he says maybe they just spun it into a publicity thing or maybe somebody called them on it like hey or why is that genderless or something but he was saying there might be like a little economic factor he's just like man they just either way came up because yeah. you got everybody talking about your product right or did they announce, like, we're in an effort? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe there was a tweet where they're, like, in an effort to be more inclusive. Did they come out and, like, say? I didn't, I didn't see a tweet if they did have one. I'll tell you what tweet I did see, though. Uh-huh. Oreos. What did they do? Trans people exist. Where? Where does it say that? They just tweeted, trans people exist. That was their tweet. But does that mean, for example, trans people exist, does that mean there are people who have gone through a sex change and they exist? Like Caitlyn Jenner is a thing, versus what's the alternative? Or, or maybe or are they saying it in terms of no trans being I, I <laughs> self identifying? I'm putting you in this fucking corner because honestly, I don't know what it means. No, I, I'm trying to understand. Like, it's, uh, so it's, was I. It's one of two things. It, it could mean either a yes, that's a thing. People are doing that now. Yeah. Versus no, there aren't two genders. You see what I'm saying? That one, that one hits a little bit harder. That's a good point. That's a good point. I guess you could look at it both ways. The Well, I, the meme I saw was a, a person in the cookie aisle, all the cookies. You have the fucking, you know, the, the chips ahoy, okay. the Oreo, all that shit. And they have a trumpet and the, the person's face was right inside the trumpet. And it was like me looking for cookies and then like Oreo. And it's like trans people exist and they're just yelling it in your face through a trumpet. That's what it sounded like. That's what it kind of came off as. I don't know what virtue signaling exactly that's, you know, what, what the, what's the aim of that? Is it polarizing the people that love Oreo, which is a giant demographic, or appeasing or appealing to the trans community, which is like 1% or 2% or something? So, a couple questions. Do you feel like, what do you think is going to happen with them economically? You think they're just going to turn off and just lose money? And, and the, all the, I guess, the trans community or the progressive folk, or liberals, whatever, are going to do a boycott. Be like, yep, thank you. That Oreo, you align with my values. That, uh, babe, honey, we're going to HEB. We're going to buy all the Oreos because they're taking a stance that we like. I like the example you used. I don't know that the that to, I don't know that that demographic is that big that a boycott would be a thing for mm-hmm. Oreos, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Versus the alternative when we said um, they were doing a boycott for Goya. That demographic is ginormous yeah. and would make, you know, AOC the employee of the month at, yeah. uh, at Goya because that's a big demographic with a lot of buying power. I don't know. I just think it's bizarre. I'm just glad to a point that I'm not cancelable because I can say all kinds of shit yeah. that I think makes sense and people can't get up in arms. And um, it was Theo Vaughn or, or Tripoli said something to the effect of like, I don't want to get to a point where I have something that they can take away, like mm-hmm. they being the elites or they being mm-hmm. Hollywood or they being somebody yeah. who's in control of Lucasfilm or whatever, right? Yeah. And he was so sincere, like, I don't want to get to the point where 
they can just take away whatever I have. I don't want to want that, basically. And I was mm-hmm. like, well, that's a good point. Yeah, Sam Tripoli said that? I think it was Tripoli or Theo, yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, think about it, man. I've been independent since I got in the game. And yes, I had a, an album that went through Asylum Records, but they were just my distributor. So I've always been about freedom and just having the liberty of being able to put out what you want, when you want, how you want, you know what I mean? In the order that you want, you're never going to get shelved. That's why, that's why I turned down so many of them little record deals because not only were they starter kit like for an artist where it's just kind of like, uh, we paid a lot of dues and we have a lot of leverage, but mm-hmm. you keep throwing us these introductory, like deal with us on a more serious level. And a big reason why I would turn down a lot of these quote unquote opportunities is because I still wanted the freedom to not be beholden to like, nah, you got to work with this producer. No, you have mm-hmm. to have this feature. Or like, you can't talk about that. No, nope, that's not a good album title. Mm-hmm. Or like, yeah, we're going to use our graphics guy. You know, and it, it, that just sounded like a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, uh, and that was back then when I wasn't even, when we weren't living in this uh, cancel culture, you mm-hmm. know, uh, people on the right, conservatives, Republican, they're all Nazis. Yeah. You know, we didn't have Alyssa Milano off the deep end. Yo, we got to talk about Governor Newsom mm-hmm. and a uh, fellow Chicano, oh, Mexican American. Sorry, I don't, I don't even know. If, I don't we know. Don't, we Who don't really know how he identifies. We don't really. Oh uh, yeah, I, that's true. You know, <laughs> shit. You know, Chicano means different things to different people. True. Big time, like especially raza, like around here, like Mexicans, like grandmas and tias and shit. Like nah, chicos and eh, los Chicanos. It's almost like that's true. It's very like. Your, your, your music ain't as good your food ain't as good like you you know your spanish ain't as good yeah. like they just people were making a really funny point too uh when it, we were talking about or actually might have been in the comments to that video you posted about the uncle ben's versus like the uh you know little debbie and all that where it's like um next you're gonna be coming because there was something also trending up too long ago about like be less asian or about like asians being something you know and i, and I didn't get into it because it was lead me towards another rabbit hole but the comments were just like next you know they're gonna come for for mexicans for brown people they're gonna try Mm -hmm. to and people are like do we still have tapatio or something like that oh yeah yeah you know it's like okay that's a good point and then the reply to that reply was like now we good now we good leave us alone kind of thing and it's just funny because it will inevitably get to that point where every seg every segment that's possible to like anything that white people own yeah anything that you could could uh (laughs) (laughs) think about it (laughs) who owns tapatio if, it, if that's a white company, yeah. if that's a white company, they got a brown man on the cover. Hey, that's the argument. White, white man bad. You're, prof- you're somehow racist for profiting for having a brown person. How, how did it. we get this far into the episode and not say happy Texas Independence Day? Shout <sighs> out. That's today. Happy Texas Independence <laughs> Day. In other words, fuck around and we'll secede this bitch again. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what the fuck that mean that means don't mess with texas and that means come and take it so before we get off i wanted to the yeah. lopez, did but you hear about the lopez i heard about it but, but please expand on it because all this is all i know maybe there's more to it mm-hmm. they were caught together at a restaurant with no masks that was at also at a restaurant that's supposed to be closed or in an area that's supposed to be closed and then that's really all i really gathered mm-hmm. what's up so break it down yeah that's what i heard first time i saw it was a chef gruel g-r-u-e-l uh, he's real big on Twitter and all that. Very outspoken <laughs> about Governor Newsom. He's been very critical of his, uh, you know, policies and shit. So apparently they were in Fresno, California, which is considered a purple county, mm. according to Governor Newsom's like, hey, man, y'all purple county over there. Based on our equation, based on our math, based on our science, you're purple and you can't be open. Y'all can't work in the restaurant industry. Well, Governor Newsom who I think currently has a, a recall Newsom that's, I don't know, over a million, 1.5. Some pay, some people say 1.8. They do, but then he says, oh, a lot of these weren't verified, so you got half. So it's a lot of motherfuckers that don't, are unhappy with him. They don't want him in there. So he's got all this heat on him right now. I bet when Lopez got the call, that was like, hey, man, hey, fool, come through, man. We in Fresno. <laughs> We got to shoot. I don't know what they were filming, like a PSA or something. Hey, man, we got to, hey, man, call George. Hey, what's up, George? It's, it's Newsom. Hey, what's up? Hey, like, <laughs> ooh, you got some heat on you right now. You kind of yeah. canceled right now, my, my G. Yeah. Over here on the West Coast, you kind of like polarizing. So now Lopez got to show up like, fuck, fool, I got to be with this dude. They got a recall on this fool right now, dog. 
And apparently they were filming something. I don't know, maybe a PSA. But obviously you got to have craft services. People got to eat. You know, you want your blood sugar dropping. Right. This Governor Newsom, you can't have a Governor faint. Got to have that Chingo College radio energy. So somehow, some way, exactly, somehow, some way, they were in there, Purple County. It wasn't supposed to be open. Maybe it was open just for them because maybe they had to film. You need a location. So I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they were already scheduled to film some kind of commercials. I'm a, I don't know. They had to eat while they were there. It's a location. It just happens to be a restaurant. <laughs> were they there just on a lunch meeting? Oh, it's more like a scenery type of vibe. We don't know. We haven't seen. I haven't heard like an official statement. But uh, it kind of sucks, huh? You know, <laughs> when you're a comedian and you got a stance and people come for you. So uh, I'm trying to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. But the same way Tom, it's the, not Tom, Ted Cruz was out there in Cancun, it wasn't a good look. The people felt a certain type of way. And here y'all are in a purple county. People said you ate. There's like a little picture and people zoomed in like, there's some napkins right there. Yeah, I saw that. So I don't know, man. You just don't want to box yourself in. And I'm starting to think like, man, they could just call you and you just there. Like, I'm starting to think, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. shit. What if you get that call to like you? Like, I'm not on salary with nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on call. Uh, I'm not cool. I don't know Ted Cruz. You know what I mean? Like, I, if Ted Cruz called me, like, okay, well, what are we doing, fool? Is it a Purple County? <laughs> uh, will there be food there? Because I'm not going to eat. You know what I mean? I will have my mask on the entire time, Mr. Ted Cruz. Not in Texas. There ain't no Purple Counties here. Not that I know of. No, nah, um, I don't think we go by that system. Governor Abbott's actually, um, he's doing another presser today in Lubbock, I think, uh, in about an hour or two. He, I don't know if you saw it, but he teased, not teased, he, he mentioned, somebody asked him, a reporter said, hey, how about these mandates? Because I think they, they went into effect, like, the full statewide mask mandate and what the, the percentages per restaurant and shit, I think in June or July of last year. Talking about here? Texas? Yeah, in Texas. Uh -huh. um, and we're still on them, right? Like, yeah. the restaurants and stuff, they've upped, I think they might be up to 100%, but maybe like 75% capacity or some shit. And then you have the mask mandate, which we still have, and whatever else, he said... Uh, the reporter was like, when are we going to do away with or, uh, you know, lift these mandates? And he said, that's a great question. Uh, we're working very hard, you know, deciding this, but we'll have some news very, very soon. And that was like Thursday. He's waiting for re-election time. Yeah, right. That's a good question. I don't know when his re-election time is, but um, it, I personally would like to see this kind of just do, obviously go away with. I, I want the kids to not have to wear masks when we're out and about. I want them to be able to get a fucking haircut without having to wear a mask, you know, because the masks are so big that the hair gets inside the mask. That shit, it makes me so, it makes uh... my blood boil, right? And I just want all of us to, to feel like we can go back to living our lives, you know, in a healthier way so that if we do get sick, we have a stronger immune system and just do better without having to have all these government restrictions on us. Like yeah. parents being scared to do anything. My mother doesn't want to go eat anywhere, right? Like for her birthday, we took her some food because she doesn't want to go anywhere. It's like, all right, ma, but on the noticias, mire que, whatever, and, and you know, fucking Channel 45 or Univision. Uh scares the fuck out of them and it's just like what do you do right yeah. until they say oh you don't have to wear a mask anymore in texas then they'll feel more comfortable but yeah man it's a tricky subject man because you know we got trump's vaccine it's out yeah the operation was it warp speed so you got the vaccine no, that's biden's bro because we didn't have a vaccine when he went into office according to uh the homie jb jb jay breezy he didn't <laughs> apparently he didn't take a vaccine before he went into office which he's he's, he's already he forgets everything but he he for sure forgot that yeah he definitely forgot that he had to circle back on that one but uh speaking of vaccines and and all this you know man let me watch what i say we got to come up with a cold slang way you're right you're right la vacuna way la vacuna no no ese también that's no, right dijimos el, el virus sí because uh, el virus that can be anything y la otra cosa la inyección way la inyección la inyección sas um so now, I was uh, listening to Scott Adams this morning, and I was doing, I was, you know, I was being a dad, bro. You this know, morning? I'm over here cutting up apples. Guess when you're good, mija? You know, I'm changing diapers. Mighty Soil had an appointment this morning, so I'm up. And I was hearing Scott say something about the rapid, cheap, like the home version of the test or something where, if I'm not mistaken, now... It's basically something that would lead us to the world you just described where, mm. hey, man, little kids don't got to wear the mask. Mom can go out to dinner and restaurants can have less, less government restriction and mandates. Basically, it's a cheap option that you should be able to go get like yourself at CVS and maybe like a, if I'm doing a comedy show 
and let's just say I'm gonna have 500 people. I need to go get. If that's something we want to do, we have 500 of these little tests. Hypothetically, right? Mm-hmm. What the FDA decided to do is make it to where you need a prescription to get those. So the thing that could have been the that 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 boom, like we're good. Yeah, ya chingamos. We got a vaccine. We did it, America. We got the vaccine. We locked down. We had a fucked up year. But but these little tests are out now and, and props to whoever made the shit possible. But the FDA was like, mm-mm. Had they given a reason? Mm-mm. Nope. They, they're not they're not given a reason which would lead many to believe there's some kind of corruption super grupo corrupción a prescription a prescription bro and they're not giving a reason bro there's no reason bro somehow some way we've become the sellouts and the coconuts meanwhile your fda says nah cuh you're not finna have access to this thing. You need a whole jump through a big old loop. You got to go to the doctor. You got to get a prescription. He's got to think it's okay. You got to take the prescription. You got to go to Walmart. If you missed this on the Patreon because you don't, you're not subscribed yet, which you should. Uh, we call this show it's so it's Red Pill Tamales, aka the Common Sense Show. Uh-huh. And a lot of the shit that we say, yeah. I think, is common sense. Mm-hmm. Makes sense, at least at the very least, right? Mm-hmm. That is one of those things that does not make sense. And there's also not a reason, so I'd love to know why you would need a prescription for a rapid test you could do at home, that you could maybe give your kid before they go to school because yeah. schools are open again. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, it's frustrating. And please go check that episode. This is newest episode that uh, he put out today on March 2nd. And I'll go back and listen to that part, too, because I wanted to... Like, I was like, what? My mind was so blown when I heard the punchline, mm. which is, and the FDA says you need a prescription. I was like, what the... <laughs> That I just totally, from what I kind of recall, it was like a cheap thing you could just go get. So You know what's funny? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is totally kind of off subject. I just thought about it. it I, I enjoy seeing some of these people that uh, have been friends or acquaintances on my social media or whatever that'll see things that I'll post that three months ago were so hardcore Biden that now, three months later, it has to be hard to be so hardcore Biden. Are they still hardcore Biden? If they're not, they don't let it be known. Don't you think that? Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Put the put us crickets. That's ah. all. That's all we can put on everything now is crickets. Mm. You know, mm. and uh, it just kind of brings a little, brings and, a little smile and, to my heart. And, and yeah, and also, man, you got these little uh, these little podcasts and these little Instagram pages. These real hardcore paisa or uh, fools gone wild, and they still on that cholo shit. Right. Um. They was they was trying to drag my motherfucking ass. <laughs> Talking about, look at this old patriotic, constitution-loving, oh, freedom, <laughs> liberty-looking ass boy. Come here, Mr. I like my rights. Check this out. You voted for a racist. And here we are with a real deal. Racist. Um, Lord have mercy. Like, I wonder what they're thinking. They ain't saying shit about these cages. They ain't saying shit about these kids. They're not saying nothing about these bombs being dropped. They're not clowning the stimmy. Uh, I mean, I don't want them to just be like, become a political page and start making fun of Jen Psaki all of a sudden. But what are they thinking in their head right now? I, I really do wonder how some of these folks that thought I made a huge mistake by seeing what I thought was the lesser of two evils, picking the, what do they say? Sometimes you got to go with the devil, you know, or something like that, or the evil, you know, mm-hmm. or something, meaning, well, you know what you're getting. <laughs> you're going to see some crazy tweets. You're going to see the news trying to twist shit up. But uh, I really feel that, you know, Raza's dependency on the mainstream narrative and the mainstream media, that they still got TDS. Yeah. So it's just a matter of time. I wonder. I will say that it's refreshing to see the uh, the positivity come through the Instagram mm-hmm. and the YouTube for what did he said, or for, you know, the, for the podcast, for mm-hmm. Repel Tamales. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Does that... Is it that more people are, it is that more people are finding out about the show, but is it also that people that maybe ha- had caught wind months ago are now deciding to, all right, I'm not going to just keep quiet about it. I'm going to be like, right on, good job, I agree, I'm, I'm telling people, whatever. Versus a couple months ago, like, we've been doing this since just after Thanksgiving. So probably like the first week of January, last week of uh, November. Then, at the most politically charged time, those people probably wouldn't have obviously they, they weren't going to be like yeah dude i agree or yeah you're right mm-hmm. or that makes sense or i've been thinking this way for a long time i see a lot of that mm-hmm. like i've been thinking this way for a while and, and i'm glad that you're saying something you know mm-hmm. using your platform 
And it's just cool. It's cool to see that people are coming to the conclusion that they can talk about it. Because if they're going to cancel you, if they're going to get rid of all people that talk about conservative, you know, right-leaning, moderate right-leaning uh, topics or ideas, fuck it. You might as well talk about it anyway if they're going to do away with it. They could just scrub the internet eventually if they want to. <laughs> they could. Uh, right. I mean, Amazon is already getting rid of books that they deem offensive. Do you know what, what, what exactly that, that like entailed or what they... Because I saw it, but I didn't dive into that one uh because when in history yeah. when in history has has the people that have tried to get do away with knowledge books and writings been the good side hey man i agree with you a thousand percent it doesn't really make sense to try to cancel dr seuss uh i mean i don't know what drawings this is two different topics but yeah. with the dr seuss thing i don't know what drawings they're talking about maybe they had some monitos that looked like like i don't know like i don't know how he drew if he drew an asian monito in his, in his books that was the only one i saw the only one i saw was an asian monito that was a little stereotypical or did it look like a, yeah like a, uh yeah stereotypical maybe had, i think had a kimono on and had chopsticks and it was eating his rice with chopsticks okay that is what Asians you don't like rice they don't wear they don't work like historically <laughs> haven't had kimonos like and the look of it, you know, with maybe the long hair, the ponytail, and the mustache, that doesn't look like what is wrong. And, and Tim Pool, actually, I didn't know this, but he's Korean and Japanese. 100%. He's no, mostly he like Korean. White. No, he he's mostly Korean. Korean and what? White? Some Japanese, and I guess I'm white. So, Tim Pool, you white, man. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's just saying that so he can talk about it. But he was like, this doesn't offend me at all. And then uh, the good point that he made, and that was the only image that I saw out of the books, because I think it was like six or something like that that they did away with that they're not going to publish. Um, he's like, what are they going to replace that with? White people. They're going to replace it with another white image that kids, that when they grow up, are just going to see more white people and stuff. Like, and then we're going backwards. Yeah, but anyway. Um, I digress. Again, I haven't seen, like, oh, he drew this uh, uh, black person, Monito, in the book. Mm -hmm. And the way he drew him, I don't know. I haven't seen it all. If, if they're just trying to update it so that it's, like, mm, better... You know what I'm saying? If they're just like, well, at the time you could draw it, you know, in 2021, we'll, we'll keep them Asian, but we're going to do them like this. You know what I'm saying? He's got a better, better. Is that, is that the right word? Yeah. I saw a comment too, where, um, there was a guy that I don't know if you follow him. Uh, I think it's at still gray, mm -hmm. uh, Gabe, good, good uh, listener of the podcast recommended oh, yeah. it. The first thing I, the first thing I see on his Twitter is a screenshot of another account that said, uh, I'm actually going to find it right now. And the comments were just like, when Black Lives Matter turns into back, Black Lives Better, you know? like Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I didn't mean it like that. No, I, I know. But yeah. it's like, can you say that like this is better than that or, even? Or no, this is what I mean. Update it in a way. Again, I haven't seen what Dr. Seuss drew that was so bad. Yeah. But like, if, if he drew it in a way that was accept, acceptable at that time yeah. in terms of a cultural sensitivity perspective and you could easily make a fuck i mean i'm not saying we got to revise everything but if there was like oh it's the uh you know the little new edition where they did a couple of tweaks you know he didn't have the long ch the asian guy didn't have the long chongo <laughs> he wasn't like a samurai confucius kung fu type of motherfucker look check it this is the screenshot he sent yeah he posted it if you want to just read it this is like three tweets okay he said uh this is I'm Black XL. Yeah, what was the tweet? Okay, we need to permanently stop supporting Asian businesses. No anti black racism lineage matters. And someone said, You're a racist. And then she said, Black people can't be racist per its definition. Good try. It's like, what? Black people can't be. Ra yeah, it's because, um, I guess, extreme leftists, or I don't know who it was, cultural Marxist, or I don't know who on the left came up with this new updated definition of racism where it excludes black folk like you can't be racist if you're black mm -hmm. it's like no you can hate white people if you're black you can hate mexicans if you're black you can hate asians if you're black like that's possible it's like yeah but per definition mm -hmm. we don't have the you know we don't have the clout to be able to hold others back therefore we can't be racist it's like oh that's an interesting loophole dude somebody put in there you ever read uh guns germs and steel no okay me neither right but uh i've heard a lot of, a lot of people did a lot of people have and they seem very smart when they talk about it yeah. no but uh callan was talking about it and uh he loves reading books right so he has on his patreon where he, he reads he does like a bookless book club does like book reports on these seminal he calls this one a seminal book one of these books where you have to read like it kind of defines existence in, What's in a it sense called? guns what? guns germs and steel okay uh. guys if you've heard, I'm, I'm sure have you at least heard the title because no. it's it's okay it's a 
I've heard this title for as long as I can remember, and it's one of those books that like never really uh, appeased or appealed to me until this recent you know year or two, and I still haven't picked it up because I have a fucking stack of books this big that I haven't gone through. Yeah. So the idea is that the author set out to find out. He was asked a question by a black guy in a tribe or in a small area of of somewhere where he was studying uh, some sort of animal. Long story short, right? He asked the author of this book, Guns, Germs, and Steel, is how is it that white people have everything and black people have nothing? Mm -hmm. That was a question. He's like, you know, I don't know the answer to that question, right? But as he continued this conversation with this, with this man, he set out on a journey to answer that question. Mm. And what he found was that the reason that the West developed to the, to the way that it did was because, and the book describes all this, in order to have what we have now, you needed guns. And then in order to have sustainability, you needed crops. And in order to have crops and cows and things that would uh, make manure and things that you could, you know, grow off of, you'd be around, you and your kids would be around a lot of shit. So that would develop a good immune system. Therefore, you'd had a better adaptability to germs. And then in order to keep your crops, your family, everything safe, you needed to develop guns and have steel and have manufacturing. So that's a reason. It was all based off of just where you were lucky enough to be born. If you were born in Africa or other parts of the country where you didn't have, you only had one animal, you you, only ha you didn't have any crops. It was all, you know, rocks, dust, dirt, whatever that you couldn't uh, harvest. And you didn't have a, a good immune system to germs. You were killed off. You died. You didn't uh, develop the way that the West did. And that, in a sense, and it, it blew my mind when he summarized it in like a 15-minute podcast, is how or why the West developed greater or faster and has always had more. And it's not about your pigment or your skin color or anything. It's about guns, germs, and steel. I was like, what? That's a very interesting <clears throat> way to look at things those variables to where he's almost saying like geographic location yeah agricultural yep. like uh, industrial revolution mm -hmm. types of things very interesting um i heard right right now right oh it's not black history month no more that was last month <clears throat> clarence thomas supreme court justice clarence thomas most famously known for the anita hill thing back in the day you were probably a kid but yeah it was when <clears throat> um they were they put him on trial for something. Yeah, right? they were hitting him with the like the whole sexual harassment. The, the Brett Kavanaugh thing before Brett Kavanaugh, basically. And and Joe Biden used to, was up there trying to drill Clarence right. Thomas and shit. Which he's also like he's like the Supreme Court justice leader, I think. Right? He's like the top of the Supreme Court judges. Apparently, he had a justice. Yeah, apparently he has a documentary out. Well, it got pulled, I guess, because maybe I don't know. Maybe because he's cons conservative black and not part of the Black Heritage Collection. On Apple, and, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> on Amazon and Hulu. So during Black History Month, how y'all gonna remove Clarence Thomas hmm. on Black History Month? Y'all could have waited till March. Y'all could have waited till Hispanic Heritage Month. Hmm. Yeah, so I, I haven't seen it. Uh, now I'm gonna try to figure out where I could find it. But um, it's crazy, man. That's fucking crazy. Nice. And if anybody has 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 is new to the to the show, tuning in and we have helped you look at things differently, like factor in economics or use different filters or, you know, if, if we red pilled you in any way, like, hmm, I kind of don't look at the news the same. Or like once you pointed out that these late night comedy shows are super biased or a lot of these um, ABC reporters and all these people that are on TV, like they're not even trying to be objective. Once you start noticing that, if if we helped in any way, yeah, please let us know, because we're trying to figure out we red pilling anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I don't know where where I would be in life if I hadn't started peeping game. Isn't that always weird to kind of think about when you have like a, uh, a I'd huge? Have, I'd have bad TDS right now, still. Bad t bad TDS, yeah, at the very least, right? But then. Outside of that, you would think to yourself, like, because it was such a monumental shift in way of thinking and therefore living because you make your decisions based off a different thought process, right? It's like, damn, what the fuck would I be doing? What would I be going? What would I be thinking if I hadn't kind of shifted the way I thought? Well, I'll, I'll put it to you like this. Them first three years when economy was open, um, you know, Trump's term, pre-pandemic, I was too busy working. Yeah. <laughs> I was too busy flying around and entertaining people, packed rooms and Chingo play, ah, theaters and shit. Ah, I like that. Doing the, ah, doing that the whole weekend. Ah. Man, because I've only been doing comedy five, six years. Three, four of those years were Trump era. So it was like, 
I don't know how much credit to give him, but I wasn't even worried about my TDS that much. Mm. I was too busy working. Yeah. <sighs> Chingo, bling. Houston, Texas. Chingo. <sighs> bling. Bum, 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 bum. I wish I could make fun of how much he's exaggerating, but those are the screams of the crowds at Chingo <sighs> Bling shows. Totally, the crowd goes wild. Cleto, Cleto, yep. Cleto, yep. Cleto. Fucking 15 different names before you get on stage. <laughs> Shout out Midnight. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Versace Mariachi. El Rey del Foreplay. He's um, so funny. I was too... Exactly. Shout out to Midnight. I was too busy working to be worried about my TDS. But then the pandemic happened. Now you stuck at home. You know, now you're just starting to peep shit. And it's like, ooh, I had a bad case of TDS. And it's like, we had a... We had a magnificent four years, but the media tells you this man did a horrible job with the pandemic. It's like, OK, some things could have been better messaging, you know, communicating certain things, not saying certain shit that's going to make you, you know, the fodder for the week. Yeah. Of the fucking news. But look at how popular homeboy is just because he made an appearance and made a speech where he's telling them Biden's fucking up. <laughs> Do you miss me yet? You know, he's, he's like, like he, he, what did he say? In one month, we went from America first to America last. Oh, drop the mic. He could have just said that, drop the mic, and got the fuck off stage. He dropped the fucking mic. But, and then he goes into the, you know, into the details of what? You know, the energy, the independence, of this, of that, the other, you know, wind, the kids. Wind, wind, wind. When you need it, it's not there. People are going to chop this up. It's and not there. For sure, make fun of this uh, this episode and us. But it's cool. Part of America. Do what no, you want. No, we need it. Yeah, for sure. Please, please do. Send me a copy. <laughs> we need you on the staff. You, you know, help Rob chop up some of these clips. <laughs> wind. 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 One of the best uh, TikTok videos I saw was of, they were talking about the media and the differences in uh, a Trump versus Biden, right? And they use this clip of when the first, the, the tax thing started going off, like, do you pay zero dollars in taxes, right? And the reporter, so Trump would finish a, uh, a, a speech or whatever, a briefing of some sort. And the reporters were just like, like, like they're trying to get you know the the scoop from TMZ. Like, is it true that you know right? They're as he's like, okay, thank you, have a great day. He'll walk off, and the guy was just like, is it? Why did you only pay no no taxes? Zero? Why did you pay you know zero dollars? And then they cut to Biden, and he finishes. He's like, you know, he's he can barely hear him talk. Right? He's like, you know, see you later. And he's like, he walks off. He's like, my mask. And he turns around, and gets his mask. And everybody, whoever's in the room that controlling the audience or the the reporters, is like, okay, everybody out now. Everybody out. Everybody get out. And one guy's like, what what happened to uh, the next day? We will get two thousand dollars to make the checks. You said the next day. It's been you know six weeks. Uh, Joe, Joe. He's like, and whatever his name was, like Clancy or something or Bobby, Bobby out, out get out, get out. And it's like, what the what kind of you know journalistic integrity is that if you can't let them ask the questions? They won't divulge the list of the visitors. Yeah, they haven't over there at the White House. These are taxpayer dollars. I want to know if y'all having little stripper parties over there. And why am I invited? Let me find out Joe Biden shit house got the White House looking like Lil Boosie's Instagram. Let me find out. Y'all having pool parties and shit with Beat King over there performing and shit. Two live crew. Who? Sean King? No, Beat King right here from Houston, man. He, he be having them girls sucking on cucumbers and stuff. Let me find out that's what's going down at the White House. That's why they got them fences over there, right? Is that it? And they, apparently... Go ahead. No, I'm just saying they're not telling us... Who, what leaders what who's meeting i think um new york post or somebody posted that trump had actually requested those six thousand or ten thousand troops to protect dc and pelosi had said no but they never said that until literally like a day or two ago so pelosi said no yeah the, hmm. the speaker of the house you know I, yeah. I guess the the misconception was that they had requested the protection of the, of the white house or of, of um you know dc because of the rally and the you know whatever stop the steal thing but in reality it was trump that said no we need more troops and people here to protect the capital so i don't know that's just one of those things you forget well, it's almost like it's a weird simulation we're living in yeah it's almost and it's like, glitching hardcore and yeah and i'm not one of those people that's like trump's playing 4d chess you know i'm not one of those folks that's like man it's because it's 5d and it it ain't it ain't over yet right but if he knew he was going to have, let's just, how many people were out there? Let's just say, I don't know, it was way more than 10,000. It might have been like 100,000 people. It was a shit ton of people. No, I mean, I mean the, uh, the troops, like 10,000. Yeah, troops. I know, I know. Yeah. But oh, yeah. how, how many Trump supporters? Oh, like half a million or okay, some shit? Okay, let's, let's just say, for easy math, he knew there was going to be half a million uh, people. He probably also knew, based on the chess game, how easy it would be for troublemakers to blend in. Let's just say 1,000 of them. It was smart. He was covering his ass, you know, however he was thinking about it. It was smart to have 
to have requested 10,000 troops. Right, troops to protect the National capital. Guard, yeah. Yeah, because these little, uh, these little, arguably, right, let's just say you, you believe that there were some troublemakers mixed in, right? They wouldn't have been able to do shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then we wouldn't have had all this fucking nonsense about like insurrection, you know, January 6th, this proof that the Hyatt be having Nazis over there. <laughs> I liked how the Hyatt statement was like something to the effect of we host several different types of events. And cool. They didn't just, they didn't bat an eye, like whatever, bro. Yeah, because at some point, man, people got to still have some kind of liberties and freedoms to be able to have a fucking event. Also, think of the time that we're in. After all the time that hotels have been closed, people haven't been able to travel, the business is already down and dying, right? And then you're going to go out of your way to try to cancel a hospitality business because they hosted an event you didn't agree with or didn't like? Man, all those people had to uh, fly in, get a hotel, eat. They need breakfast. They need lunch. They need dinner. They probably going to have some drinks. They you need know, shit to do, maybe. It, that's just an influx of money. And I think the uh, Republicans were supposed to have something here in Houston at uh, George R. Brown. Oh. If I'm not mistaken, a Holy. while back, one of the conventions, mm -hmm. and our, our beautiful mayor, Sylvester Turner, was like, nope, can't do it here, Bubba. It was around, it was in the summer. Hmm. Uh, somebody fact-checked me. It was in the summertime. It was around the time that... Um, it's around the time that the Democrats were trying to use Vanessa Guillen's uh, tragic mm. death to try to somehow spin it into Joe Biden votes. Gotcha. Yeah, it was around that time. Because we don't, rest in peace, Vanessa Guillen, we do not know how she was going to vote. Mm -hmm. And somehow, some way, they tried to turn this into like a brown lives matter and y'all need to vote Democrat. Somehow they were trying to, in my mind, it was like, well, this is one of our causes of our gente. And people were trying to get involved that weren't the family and tr you know what i'm saying like i even saw uh, we talked about it several episodes ago where it was like vote because you know george can't speak you know george can't breathe vanessa can't this da, 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 and they just had her mixed in with all these other people like police brutality people and somehow they was just like all oh, this is white supremacy somehow some way you know <laughs> what, what really boggles my mind sometimes dude is that we live in a time where there's never been more access to information available to you, right? Just hear me out here, for people watching and listening. Mm -hmm. And all I would like for, for people to have, us included, everybody, is just the information, right? The facts, the, the, the scenario, give me the transcript and the actual thing that happened, everything that transpired, and let me make my own informed decision about it. But we have so much fake news well we don't yeah we no longer have like a news industry we don't really have journalists no and that's that's scary because how do you ever one go back to that and then where do you go from here like what are you actually doing to source your information like does everybody start becoming a q supporter or you know what i mean like that, that's why people always like oh yeah where'd you get your info the internet and it's like where the fuck else do you get it also you got to go through like six different outlets to at least get some sort of similarities and you can't even use google Duck, you, know, duck, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, know what I mean when people say, where'd you get your info from? Somebody on YouTube? It's yeah. like, unfortunately, you can't get it from The View. Yeah, I don't know how that <laughs> is even an argument anymore. Like, yeah. what, what is it exactly about? If it's okay, so if I said, no, I don't get it from, from, the, from the internet, they'd be like, oh, okay, well, which one of the six publications on TV do you get it from? Yeah, and do then, you get it from Jeff Bezos, Washington Post? Yeah. Do you get it from the Carlos Slim, New York Times? There you go. Like, do you get it from, who are you getting it from? Disney's ABC? You getting it from The View? Who? who? Kelly Ripa and uh, El Otro Way, El Baboso, Ryan Seacrest in the morning? <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel, Trevor Noah? Uh, other comedians? Where are you getting this shit from? You know, it sounds crazy to be like, oh, I heard it on a Rogan episode where he had Jordan Peterson on there or he had a Gad Sad and somehow, some way, um, you know, this Ben Shapiro dude, I went from the Joe Rogan to the Ben Shapiro. Now I'm on Candace Owens page. Now I'm on the YouTube. Sure, you got to be careful that you don't end up on the wrong YouTube page and they just send selling you bullshit because you don't know how to kind of peep game and look for context and ask certain questions. But unfortunately, yeah, we live in a world where you better off getting it from like a Tim Pool, yeah, an independent journalist, somebody yeah. that doesn't work for, uh, you know, the Washington Post. Yeah, pick your person in the middle too. Like uh, I, I told you about um, fucking Jimmy Dore a while back, and I think you've been peeping some of his stuff. Mm -hmm. He's as he's as I guess moderate centrist, whatever it can be when it comes to calling out both sides. I think he obviously he says he's more of um, 
libertarian, I think, or mm. old school libertarian or something like that. But he's going to call everything out. And funny enough, fucking like Sleepy Joe, I just remember what I was going to say earlier, the <laughs> conspiratorial type of shit. Yeah. The old image, or the not even old, especially the old Biden images and videos and then like five years ago and then like now they all look like different people yeah. and i get people sending me shit all the time yeah, he about, got a whole new head <laughs> yeah, dude that it's just like a fake person him and his wife like these aren't the same people you know it's fun to think that maybe it's not the same guy and all i say to the people that send it because well, i like to entertain that shit it's fun yeah 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 i mean think about it They're, them deep fakes are getting good really good you don't think the government has used that on other countries to yeah. frame a, a leader or to have a leader from some country say a thing that he really didn't say dude and, and just let it circulate yeah you work in hollywood you've worked in hollywood all that shit you know the prosthetics you know why can you know um i don't know fucking vision from marvel look like vision but really just take all the prosthetics off and it's a dude it looks so real right like why can't they make people people and be like rob's a conspiracy theorist I mean, i'm just saying i, don't I mean know. hey can people take pictures of what's going on at the white house or are so many fences that you can't even do that no more that's a good like, point like in other words are you able to kind of look in to see what world leaders are visiting and what's what's going in and out of there almost like a trap house yeah and hey <laughs> <laughs> you know, are you able to see like hey man transaction they, I, they, they go putin <laughs> look look at putin i appreciate everybody that sends me shit on my personal instagram at rob gtv and it, a lot of them are similar so it's like either they know each other and they're sending it to each other and they send it to me because i swear yesterday i got three different people that sent me that say it was the same video where it's like why did um joe biden's motorcade because i think he was in houston the other day mm -hmm. um why did joe biden's motorcade look like a piece of shit and the the suburban looked like literally like it had handprints that were like running down the side of it from a scary movie it looked like it had dings and whatever and then it's like why did trump's look perfect you know pulling up to cpac and it's like why is joe biden coming upstairs to air force one that don't have any red and, carpet yeah and all this different shit i'm like they make kind of solid points sometimes what happens with conspiracies is like Sometimes there's a good reason we just kind of don't get a chance to know or see or they don't communicate it on time. Like when I was framed, <laughs> like when I was framed and people were just seeing these little short clips, you know, and it's like, Chingo, you going to do damage control? It's like, hey, the lie travels faster than the truth, <laughs> right? Like Chingo secretly hates, he's self-loathing and he, he's been all right this whole time. He's QAnon and this and that. And it's like. Y'all took a little clip from a Periscope way out of context, and y'all trying to make me sound crazy. You know, but here we are. We double, triple down. We're on RPT season three, episode number 32. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful uh, listeners we have out there. You're special, and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the best audiences anyone has ever seen in podcasting. Do but, you miss me yet? Yeah. But um, anyway, when you frame, like, for example, what happens with conspiracies is there might be a reason that we just don't know. Like, oh, that day they were using Air Force Two. Or that's an old video. That's old footage of him and Jill getting on the plane. That's why there's no red carpet. Or somebody complained about the red... Or, or they were about to swap out the red carpet. They were going to update it. And it wasn't ready yet. You know, there's probably like some stupid reason we don't know. Totally. Just, just like I was trying to give George Lopez the, the, the benefit of the doubt. Now, do I think... Do I think maybe i don't know if he's real cool with the governor or maybe he's just trying to keep it cool with the governor he's like man i'm gonna just do this skit with him and i know people don't like him right now but trying to give him the benefit of the doubt okay it was a purple county well they had to eat while they were filming the thing and you know it don't look good but i don't know i don't know how much heat he's yeah getting. what happened to optics well i haven't heard <clears throat> shit about optics when it comes to that you know scenario like in terms of like anybody on the left you, is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Saying like, uh, it's it doesn't look Purple good. County and it's a restaurant and it's well, open. Hmm. And Why not pick anywhere else that's yeah. not a Purple County if that exists? I don't know how California rolls I, right I'm, now. I just don't know what they were doing there. I don't either. And after I've said all that about, you know, old Joe Biden or put like a possibly robot Joe Biden, I want to add, let's all, let's all not be so gullible, you know, as I say that, right? Because that's a word I haven't heard enough lately. Like people are so gullible to believe everything that they see immediately and then not look anything further into it like the clickbaity shit or the i'm gonna you know i'm gonna rope you in with this misleading um paragraph and they'll read just that first paragraph and then run with it right there's so much people there's so many people just being gullible as fuck you know and being sensitive at the same time that's not a good combination <clears throat> well i mean when you have when you have cognitive bias you already believe a thing 
if you already voted for a person, now you have like, um, what is it called? Like the need to be consistent. Like you bet on that horse. Oh, right. Now all of a sudden that horse look extra fast. Yep. And so you got, con- con- um, ¿cómo se llama? Continuity? No, cognitive bias. Okay, yeah. I think that's what it is. You already bias. And then before you click on the clickbait or somebody sends you the meme, if you've already been primed that, hey, this is kids in cages all over again, you know, or mm, if you've already been primed that, no, Biden's cages are nicer. Mm-hmm. However, you've already been primed and the way it's framed, and then depending on your bias source, they're going to use persuasive la- persuasive language like, no, there is not a crisis at the border. You saw that one? They were like, well, according to Homeland Security, if we have a thousand illegal crossings a day, that's a problem. That's a crisis. And we're currently at anywhere between 3,000 and 4,000 illegal crossings a day. And it looks like y'all have a crisis and y'all are overwhelmed. And is it because y'all have made this announcement? You know, Joe Biden's policies have made, made this announcement. We're not going to deport you. Come on in. We got you. Um, and then now the coyotes and the sex traffickers and the human traffickers and people trafficking babies and women and all this type of stuff, they're making a killing like plumbers in Houston when it freezes. Yeah. Right. So now you got human traffickers making more bread thanks to Biden's policies. So I want to make a meme of the Indian dude with the gold shirt with all the chains and have it say like human traffickers under Biden's policies. Right. (laughs) Because. Supposedly there's a crisis at the border, but if you're Alyssa Milano or you you follow certain Latino celebrities that are going to lead you off a cliff, you're probably going to go on MSNBC and then you're probably going to be like, oh, no, see, we're good because uh, he's the guy from the White House said it's not a crisis. So it's not a crisis. You know, it's so <laughs> it's so depressing to turn on national news, <clears throat> you know, to turn on a CNN or a Fox for that matter. Like there's always been a, a, a way that people talk, you know, your, your anchors have to talk. And um, I don't know. I just find it like I, I'm surprised that it has this many people hypnotized. It's like so hardcore. I mean, Easiest I, guess, I guess I was there for a long time. Um, now, let's make this statement. Men can't menstruate. <laughs> what the fuck? Are we allowed to say that? That's out of left field. <laughs> yeah, because I wanted to make sure I didn't forget it and I didn't want to write it down. Are you men, sure about that? Too? Men, can't, men, men can't menstruate. Men can't menstruate. I'd have to agree, you know. I don't. I don't necessarily want to agree with everything on Chingo, but we have, you know, great minds think alike kind of thing. I think that's common sense. But what is the thought of the internet when it comes to this? Oh, like what do you mean? What is YouTube gonna do to us? What? No. What do you think <laughs> the internet thinks about that statement? The internet. You mean the le- people on the left on the internet or people on the right on the internet? What do you uh, mean? The people that would be outraged that you said men can't menstruate. Um, like little kids on TikTok, <laughs> like these little uh, cultural Marxists, these little leftists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously they're just like, hey man, you're being transphobic. Mm. So what, what uh, Dennis Prager was saying, when he was saying that your religion mm-hmm. can become leftism and then their sins in leftism is all the, it's like Islamophobe, transphobe, homophobe, this phobe, that phobe, all the phobes. All the phobias. All the phobes. Yeah, all the phobias and shit. Islamophobia, uh, xenophobia. All those phobias, that's that's their weaponry in their religion of leftism. They go around, uh, boom, boom. Hey, hey, I heard what you said, Chingo. You said men can't menstruate. You're a hater. It's like, well, in 2021, you can probably, that's maybe more of a thing. But that dude, Dennis Prager, was saying that years ago, he was on Bill Maher's show, and he was damn near making a prediction because he's like, well, let me say this, you know, boom, boom, this, this, that, and men can't menstruate, and this, this, and that. And they were like, what? Why are you, what do you mean? Of course not. Like, why are you saying, what, what, what's that about? He's like, I, I, I need to go watch it. But in essence, it was one of those like, now look. He says, now go on that show and say men can't menstruate. He's like, Bill Maher or his audience wouldn't be able to attack you because on their side, they, that'd be considered you're a hater and a transphobe. Mm. so it's like believe in the science believe in the science except that part the the it's on you know the male and the female kooky crazy fucking world we're living in and it's a touchy subject that's why i'm i'm you know for the most part i really don't comment on that type of shit only because like do what you want that's cool yeah but when you're trying to force you know or put it in look three-year-olds heads like my baby's two and a half she's six months away from being able to decide her own gender <laughs> Bruh. according to 
according to <sighs> this new Equality Act, which makes it to where dudes playing in women's sports, beating up on girls, you know, out racing, uh, you know, chicks. I think Nicole Harbour tweeted, if you, if you were born with a dick, you have no place in women's sports. Yeah. I mean, that's common sense to me. And then, pobrecitos, if you're a woman who's transitioning into male and you want to compete, you about to get smoked because you're going up against real dudes. Yeah. You know, motherfuckers smoking your ass, dusting your ass. You back there huffing and puffing with the other trans people that's like, damn, man, it ain't fair. And it's just a fucking cycle. It's just a cycle. They they call it equality, but it's like, well, have we thought this through? You want to have a dude, according to the Equality Act, if I'm not mistaken, please fact check me. You're able to just not have any hormone, like go through no surgery, nothing. Like you and I right now could just say, yeah, we feel like we're chicks now. And we could just bust into the, uh, excuse my language, I don't want to say bust. Bust it. Walk up in. Bust it. Bust, bust on into the women's uh, locker room. Like, hey, no, I identify. It's a quality act. And then as you walk in and say, I'm about to bust. <laughs> it's like, what? I just bust it all up in here. <laughs> hey, don't be busting all up in here. Uh, but I can do what I want. I identify as a woman. Equality act. Uh, yeah, and, and, and they buried that stuff in the, because equality act is what? The like, you can't you can't fire somebody you can't hire based off you know skin color or sexual orientation that's what it's supposed to be that's like the framework of it but then you add all this other shit to it yeah and which now, is dudes can go in women's locker room and now if you're against the equality i like what well, you don't want people to get hired based off of skin color or, or not to get you know hired fired whatever and it's like complain but you're putting all this shit together that you know doesn't need to go together well they they um they name shit a certain way yeah so that the minute you try to go against their bill or law or whatever it's like pff, wait what do you mean like it's like saying um so you're against the you know pro apple movement it's <laughs> yeah. like are you saying you're anti-grape and it's like whoa 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 what i like wine what are you talking about you, you know what i'm saying that's a dumb example no yeah. that's a solid example because it could be for anything really at this point you could do that for anything and that's why having platforms is so important like different free speech free speech like back it, to free speech yeah. like it doesn't mean you're transphobic no like, it doesn't mean you're afraid of trans people if you say, maybe it's not a good idea that dudes are beating up on girls in the MMA or that dudes could just bust all up in the women's locker room. Look, if you have to be 18, 21 is a better example, 21 to buy a booze, mm -hmm. why can't you just wait till they're 21 to do this other shit you're talking about? Man, I don't know. Gotta be man. 18 to buy cigarettes, you know? I don't know. It's Older just... in some areas. It's a strange world, man. I don't know what they're teaching these kids in these public schools, but that's a whole other subject. Uh, that dude informed with Anthony. Yes. I repost his stuff. Um, he said he's down to be on the show. Cool. And, and stuff like that whenever we um, line up guests. Excellent. Um, you want to segue into our patrons? We got some Patreon questions on. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's do that now. So we can talk about it. So the public uh, public episode, you get to hear this as well. If you're not a part of the Patreon, uh, it's patreon.com forward slash tamales. Subscribe to whatever tier you feel like uh, supporting. So this is what we posted to, um, so that we asked for. Uh, we just had, yeah, yeah if you had questions. comments, questions, anything. Uh, mm -hmm. Here we go. Let me read some. Oh, we got a lot. All right. So Dan RYZ1 says, can, can Chingo draw the anti Biden cartoons? to offend lefty larry i said genius i said maybe he can be offended to a comic of the eight white identities <laughs> or that the uh men can't menstruate uh, stuff like lefty larry just being like you're obviously part of the problem That's funny. and you need to get with the new normal what's that express uh, what is it oh yeah, yeah you need you know if you don't think there's eight white identities you need to unlearn and deprogram because you're being systemic um omar rivera says have you seen the video of steven crowder proving that people voted in nevada and michigan from addresses that don't that don't exist yeah we chatted about that it's very scary stuff mm -hmm. uh sergio lopez says not a question but an interesting comment i bought a flight on american airlines and i was checking in online 24 hours before my flight one of the options during the process was would you like to make a money donation to offset your carbon footprint? <gasps> he says, I almost spit out my coffee before checking in off the no box. That's genius of American Airlines oh to be like, God. that's genius of them. Yeah. It's like saying, this is why, Rob. American Airlines is like, okay, all right, you woke motherfuckers. If you really want to feel guilty about, about, about your carbon footprint, go ahead and donate to us. Another thing, if you're feeling white guilt and you feel bad for being white and part of the problem... Give me another check. 
Like that's gangster. And sit in the back of the plane. Give up all yeah, your friends. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's great. Um, how about somebody said? How about Trump's speech at CPAC? Talked about it. It was solid. Mm-hmm. Brian says, "Happy Texas Independence Day. God bless Texas." What other? Hell yeah. Uh, Mason Montez says, "Any thoughts on dropping the Chingo Bling name and using your real name for comedy?" Yes, I have thought about that. Really? Yeah. Only because you outgrow certain things. Um, I'm not saying our rappers at some point should start going by their real name, but or even comedians. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, most comedians use their real name. But like, for example, I mean, it's a smart branding thing when you got like Jay-Z, Sean Carter, P. Diddy, you know, Sean Combs, like to get your name out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, I think. Sergio Lopez, I'm 47. After graduating from high school out of Chicago public schools in 1991, I heard Rush Limbaugh on the radio while working, trying to save up for college. I'm first generation born in America from Mexican parents who both had to work and never took any handouts. What Rush said, I looked up for myself to verify. I found out he was telling the truth and making sense. That was the beginning of my quest to find out what was really going on in politics as opposed to what you see on the news. I'm a blue-collar, married, Catholic father of five who bought my first house at 20 years old and moved my family to the suburbs to give them a better life than the one I had. Yo, holla, good job. Gangster. Edgar Samaniego says, have you seen Dan Crenshaw's The COVID Relief Bill exposed on his Facebook? Oh, no. He said, also, this started popping up in the town next to mine, and he put a uh, the link of the flyers in Midland. Ah, see? That, a, lot that, of people are, yeah. a lot of people are talking about that. That's amazing. I can't wait to look into that because somebody's obviously trying to stir up the pot and to make this fake fear that we just talked about in those surveys. Mm-hmm. It's perfect timing. If the survey says... <laughs> The Democrats' number one fear is, ding, Trump supporters. Number two, white nationalists. Number three, um, systemic racism or whatever. Then it's like, if you're Antifa, you're like, everybody get a spoon. We about to stir the pot. All right, guys, we're getting on a plane. We're going to Midland. Remember, you hop out the van and you just put the flyers and make sure to wear your Trump hat. Everybody wear your Trump hat, get your Trump shirt and put these flyers everywhere and just drop it in the mailbox. Remember, I used to sell siding door to door. So I know all about hopping out of van <laughs> and canvassing a neighborhood. It's like you hit that block, I hit this block. So it doesn't cost much to go to Kinko's. I haven't seen the quality. Flyers in general are dirt cheap. Yeah. And we've are we already know that Antifa and a lot of these, like um, you know, maybe the the violent extremists. Well, yeah, the political uh, violent people. They got budgets, they fundraise, they crowd crowdfund, they got the GoFundMe's and shit. And flyers are cheap. Antolino Torres says, by any chance, have you seen the Larry Elder doc, Uncle Tom? A good portion of the movie talks about blacks who learn, who lean conservative, libertarian, conservative slash libertarian, and how they're treated. There's obvious similarities between blacks and Latinos in that regard. It also dives into the way the Democrats broke up the black family by creating welfare and essentially creating the replacement of the father in the home. In the tail end, it also talked about how Latinos are now the new target of Democrats and they're aiming to do the same to us. Hmm. Yeah. I just recently started following Larry Elder, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Katie Pablo says, when are you coming to El Paso? More tour dates. My husband and I need to get out and laugh. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Shout out to producer Rob for keeping uh, the What Did He Said page popping and the YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Check out the clips. Give us feedback. Leave a comment. You know, be courageous, man. It's okay to, you know, they can't cancel all of us. You know what I'm saying? They, they can't fool us all. That's the new one. They can't fool us all. That's a good one. They can't fool us all. With my camera they can't fool us all uh thank you so much for tuning in shout out to the patrons if you want to join and sign up it's just for the price of a cup of coffee five dollars and we're gonna hook you up if i would believe it patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales shout out to shell shock cbd use promo code chingo to get 10 percent off uh they even have some gummies with with melatonin in it mm. you gotta get your sleep fellas we talked about it on the uh, chingo chat yep. so my sleep and hormones and all that y'all be safe y'all be good and i'll see you in a city near you if i would believe it